You don't have to be smarter than a fifth grader or even a first grader to commit potential copyright infringement using AI tools. One IP attorney watched over the weekend as his young son built a bedtime story generator that used copyrighted characters without permission. Quote, when experimenting with Google's AI studio over the weekend, my six-year-old son had the idea to create a website that would tell stories and generate pictures of the story. U.S. IP lawyer Jonathan Menkes, a partner at the Nob Martin's law firm, explained in a blog post. In less than two minutes, he created a fully interactive website, including the proposed name, Bedtime Story Weaver. All it took to get Menkez the Younger to create his tool was a few basic prompts that were so simple, even a six-year-old with zero coding experience was able to create a web app asking users to provide a target age, theme, characters, an optional mor uh, morale or lesson, learning objective, preferred story length, and tone to get an instant AI pen tale. First up, Menkez's son generated a story about a dragon and a knight, which came with an accompanying photo. So far, so good, Menkez explained, but my son's imagination did not stop there. Next, he prompted his vibe-coded story generator to give him a story about a video game character, Sonic the Hedgehog. I think a lot of people know that going on an adventure with Nintendo's mascot, Mario. Mario. A few more details added, and boom, Google AI Studio's custom website spit out a story about Sonic and Mario questing for coins. As an IP attorney, this was jaw-dropping, Megas said. My sweet little son unwittingly created something that I spent over a dec decade of my life preventing others from doing. Uh, as IP practitioners, we need to understand how this technology works and anticipate problems and opportunities it affords. Mike has told the register in an email. This, ex uh, this is exactly what happened to me over the weekend when having a bonding moment with my son. So this is, once again, it's kind of like, look, humans are involved. Humans are using AI. Humans are doing things they should know better. This guy was obviously watching his son do this, so for him, he could say, hey, look, this is wrong. You can't do this. You cannot use, you know, Mario and Hedgehog or whatever, you know, whatever companies, Nintendo and all that stuff. You, you just can't, um, you just can't copy that stuff. It's not right. But when you think about it, there are a lot of people that, probably don't know any better and then just go out there and utilize those characters and, and create things. And that's where you, you, you get into trouble. And that's where I think AI is going to be a problem. However, you have that same problem with copying and pasting things that are on Google and, and other platforms that, you know, are also an issue. It just comes down to morality. It comes down to, you know, are you, intelligent enough to understand that you can't do this stuff. A small kid, somebody who's a child, isn't going to know that, but their parents should be watching everything they do, like this particular father. But then you get into complications of IP. When it comes to coding, when it comes to other intellectual property that may be in a gray area, and I'm going to do another video on that where there are what's called patent trolls. And you can, you may, you know, I'm not saying that this particular attorney is a patent troll, but there are attorneys that are out there that will go around suing companies that are using technology that uh, may have been designed by AI and unknowingly had already been patented and they, they end up getting sued. You know, so there's some weird kind of gray areas and things like that that are going on that is definitely a separate video to this. But uh, moving on, while, while there are plenty of concerns to be had over how AI companies are using or misusing copy, copyrighted content to train their models, Mankis posits his bedtime story incident 
as one that should alarm IP holders regardless of what AI companies are doing. Intellectual property holders should be prepared for a potential tsunami of software applications, as I was just talking about, and websites that push the boundaries of current IP law, he warned. At a minimum, the IP lawyer suggested, IP holders need to review their existing methods of monitoring the web for copyright infringement to ensure all the potential misuse of their brands is being captured as current methods are likely insufficient for the modern world of AI IP infringement. To illustrate that point, see our prior coverage of how natural prompts, e.g. video game plumber instead of Super Mario, will still return. So I guess this is interesting. And neutral prompt. So if you're if you're using AI and you say a video game pl plumber, it's gonna pull up Super Mario and still and still give you the Mario guy instead of just creating something on its own because it's pulling from the internet. Combating such deeply embedded IP infringement, Menke said, is going to require copyright holders to take a more direct approach, perhaps AI, to search for that. So AI is going to be searching for other AI infringement. That's how this is going to go. Combating such deeply embedded IP infringement, Menke said, is going to require copyright holders to take more a more direct approach, which I just said. Brand owners should go further and have people within their organizations test each new AI tool on the market to determine whether it includes internal safeguards to prevent users from generating unauthorized content. Along with that approach, Menkes also recommends that IP holders have a triage plan in place to take quick action when any infringement is discovered. That said, in an era where it's easy to reproduce and manipulate copyrighted IP as typing a prompt into a text field, true, IP holders also need to recognize that it's not like the olden days of IP law. Uh, quote, I think that IP owners and AI companies can find ways to work together so both can benefit from the tremendous opportunities this new technology provides. Companies that can stem the infringement while also creating opportunities for creative outlets will be the ultimate victors in this AI race, which is, I mean, it's good of him to say that. Most lawyers would just say, pay me. OpenAI has already paved the way for rights holders to monetize their IP for, on Sora. Sora is probably one of the more powerful ones right now that just you can't tell when you put something into it if it's real or not. It's crazy. Even with those sorts of arrangements, however, Megas believes that IP law is going to have, have to significantly evolve in the coming years. What that may look like, though, isn't even clear to this IP expert. So, yeah, so these things are going to evolve so rapidly, so quickly, that even humans are just not going to be able to keep up. They're going to need AI to deal with the AI. So it's just one of those snowball effect things. But let me know what you have to say about that. And what do you think is going to happen with IP infringement, both in... You know, all I guess really all intellectual property, whether it be coding, whether it be, you know, art, uh, photographs, people, all this stuff. Let me know what you um, think about what's going to happen in the future. Is it is it going to be? Do you think? You know, hopefully, AI will end up creating its own things. It'll become sophisticated enough where it won't just simply pull something from the internet and just repro reproduce it the same. Yeah, you know, the idea would be to create your own music, like, you know, the story I had done before. You know, this is going to be in, you know, when it comes to all art, music, um, intellectual property in a way, I guess, could be considered art. But it's going to be uh, an interesting next um, many years and decades to see how this all plays out. But let me know what you have to say.